Hi, friends. Dr. Digger doing so much better this week. I'm so glad you let me pour my heart out, and I'm glad all that's out in the open now. Now you know where I'm coming from. And uh, I'd like to help you maybe if you've got some anxieties built up. Maybe all this stuff that's going on around. Interrupt your program for some cane spur breaking news happening now at the Bluegrass Museum. And that's why I want to thank all of you for coming out today. It's heartwarming, the support that you've given Mr. Martin and his family. And with that, I'd like to donate something to you and the museum for my personal collection. It's a, would you hand that to him, punk? It's a towel that was found at the Razorback Inn in Eureka Springs, Arkansas, that I know was used to dry off Bill Monroe. And uh, that'll go good with that pillowcase you got from the King's Inn in King, North Carolina. And also, uh, this almost brand new woman's cowboy boot that was found in the Graskell's dressing room. I know it's going to be good, and I got a couple other items that they're going to give over to you. But uh, with that, I want to make a statement on behalf of the Stone County Bluegrass Alliance. Now, it's not 100% clear why this happened. What is clear is where it happened. And it's hallowed ground. Here at the Bluegrass Museum, RV Park, and home to the Hog Tracks Bluegrass Festival. How do you feel about modern jazz players disrespecting Bobby Osborne's weenie? They shouldn't have touched the weenie. No one should have touched that weenie. But we don't know it's modern jazz players. Be honest with you. Uh, let's all be honest here and don't go accusing people about things you don't know about. It's all speculation. I know a lot of modern jazz players that would never touch the weenie. Now, I'd like to also say before there's any other questions is that I am tired of people trying to gain out of this. Come on Stone County, we're better than this. I'll tell you who's better than this, and that's the folks at Townsend Spice and Supply. For all your flavorful needs, go to Townsend Spice and Supply. Can you comment on the tape of you trying to hire Sammy Sheeler to whoop Buddy Mountain? <laughs> you people kill me. In the words of Luda, wasn't me. You're on a tape. Tape? Where would you find a tape like that? <laughs> um, literally, it came from the Dr. Digger Show, episode 6. We were hacked. I remember that was over Christmas. By who? Modern Jazz. This has been Kane Spur Breaking News. And now, back to your program. Leads me to a story about my Aunt Mert, my Uncle Verbal. Uncle Verbal, he was a traveling preacher, one of the best prop preachers you ever saw in your life. While he was preaching, he'd take his glass eye out and he'd set it on the pulpit and then he'd spin her around to the congregation and he'd say, the Lord sees all. Well, what a lot of people don't know is Uncle Verbal, he likes to take a little sip every now and again. Well, he'd go down to the stump after church on Sundays and all the old men being down there by the poor off, have their old foot up on that stump, sitting there solving the world's problems while they spit and whittled and took a sip. Well, Uncle Verbal, he took him a few too many. He came in loop-legged right at dark, went right to bed because he didn't want one ain't Mert to know. And the next Monday morning, he woke up bright and early, and that eye was gone. He went to retracing his steps and made it all the way back to that old stump, and there his eye was just staring at him. And underneath it was a note that said, I see you. Well, none of us know if it was Aunt Mert or the good Lord himself. But every Sunday now when he goes to that old stump, he leaves that eye at home. Y'all have a good week, friends. Choo-choo!